Hey, what's up guys? So I just wanted to do a quick overview. I'm really spent on military subjects right now and it's really coming through in my work. I've had to strip the, the Africa Corps guy like twice already. So I took a break and decided to just hammer through uh, a project that I've been working on for the past couple of months. And this project started, um, technically it started back in April. And uh, when I went to Amps Nationals, I built this suit and I didn't I uh, know what I was going to do with it at the time, but I knew that, you know, I was wanting to finish it. Now, the suit is from Hasegawa, and in this instance, it's not a suit. It's a robotic whale, and this, of course, is Captain Ahab, and it's a steampunk version from Scale 75. He's a white metal figure. He's extremely heavy. He's about a pound, and he has a, I'll turn him around in a second and show you what all's involved. But um, these armor pads on the Metro we go are actually rubber. They're not friendly to sand. So the idea was to create straps using lead foil, and that was after everything was painted. And you have to be really careful because you get some glue spots here and there. And in this case, it's all weathered up, so I think I've kind of hid them decently. This figure is fantastic. It's a great casting from Scale 75, and I really had no clue on what the heck I was going to do with a steampunk figure, especially an Ahab version. And then the ideas started spinning and you, know, you talk with other figure painters and stuff and uh, come up with the ideas. And so I had this thing sitting on the shelf, built and ready to go, just hadn't been painted. And so I went ahead and went through that process and I had already started Ahab as soon as I got back from Expo. This was the first thing that I started putting paint on. For the baseboards, I have this old pirate figure from like the early 80s. It's not a very good figure, but so I'll probably never get to it. But uh, this was perfect uh, for the wood slats part of the ship. And then I had my neighbor uh, who was a, a guy experimenting in 3D printing and he printed me some cogs and PLA plastic, which is not very forgiving. But fortunately, uh, I used all water-based acrylics and went kind of light on the sealants. And so I don't have to worry about anything melting. Now, if it leaves out in the sun, this is biodegradable PLA, so it will uh, get damaged. And so I have to be careful in transport and things like that if I want to take this to a show that doesn't overheat because these could melt and warp and so taking a break already having Ahab pretty much done and being able to focus on the whale do some airbrushing and things like that which I haven't done in months was a great exercise and so I'll turn them around here and share some more of it with you that's pretty cool this is one of the reasons why the figure is so heavy is this canvas bag and this uh, harpoon launcher and so with the blunderbuss here that's going across his back uh, I tried out some new things on leather tried out some new things on wood tried a new thing out with metallics and then this uh, blade that's sticking out of the whale's head was actually uh, attached to the blunderbuss and I just cut it off because that's the story that I wanted to tell uh, for the weathering and stuff I just used dot filters and uh, a couple of uh, washes not too much and then I uh, used Vallejo's thick Russian mud to create some sludge here on the deck. And so anyways, that's a look at uh, Ahab of Tomorrow. It was a great project and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, experimenting outside of the military subjects in, the, in the future videos because it's great fun and it's a great uh, escape from the norm. So anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon.